Hi, this is Sebastian Satwi. I'm a rheumatologist in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And today I'm going to be, you're going to be joining me for a QD clinic. And what better than a typical or a fun case in rheumatology than uh, a fever of a known origin or FUO. Uh, as we always say, when there's a suspicion for FUO, you always get an infectious disease, a hematologist and um, a rheumatologist. And this is the, the part that I think we, we are, it's very important for our involvement in some of the cases that uh, we get consulted on. This can be certainly in the outpatient setting as well as in the inpatient setting. The patient that I'm going to be talking about today was a patient that I saw in the hospital. And she was, um, she was a 68 year old um, with really no significant medical history, maybe some mild hypertension, and that was it. She had recently retired from work um, and, and she kept, which in her job, she had a, it was a very busy kind of fast paced job. And she was, um, you know, completely independent, physically active. She powered walk five, five days a week without any issues. But one day that changed and she didn't feel like walking and she felt fatigued and she started running low grade fevers that were, you know, low 101 happening mostly on a daily basis. There was she was not having shortness of breath, was not having any rashes, was not having any headaches, was uh, not having any abdominal symptoms, any urinary symptoms. She was just running some uh, low-grade fevers and was having significant fatigue. And that's how she initially reported it. So that took her to her PCP, who started working her up. Um, there was some uh, mild anemia. There was some thrombocytosis in her initial labs. Elevate, elevated inflammatory markers, uh, but there was a concern for infection. Unclear necessarily why what that was brought up initially. Uh, you know, she had other extensive workup, but she ended up getting a um, a TTE, so an echo, which showed the possibility for you know some abnormality, possible you know calcification versus vegetation in her aortic valve, uh, which raised the concern for the possibility of endocarditis, even though also in the outpatient setting, her blood cultures were negative. Um, she still continued to have fatigue, still low grade fevers. And, you know, she ended up having initially CAT scans, which did not show anything else. Um, and she was not able to do the power walking as she usually did. She got a, ended up getting admitted to the hospital. And when while admitted to the hospital, the reason was, of course, the concern of uh, this possibility of, of a vegetation and subacute uh, bacterial endocarditis. Again, although her cultures were negative and she didn't have any kind of unusual exposures, no history of any, you know, IV drug use, no history of any weird traveling, and she um, re had a TEE, which just showed that it was some, you know, calcification. There was no concern for any vegetation. Blood cultures were negative as well. And while inpatient, she got a PET scan, which the PET scan did not show any significant abnormalities. Um, so she had seen ID, which ID said nothing. She had seen him on and had had some blood work and she also had a PET scan, which a PET scan did not show any abnormalities. Um, she had seen her primary care slash cardiologist who had admitted her hospital for the concern of a subacute uh, bacterial endocarditis. Uh, so missing down the list was rheumatology. And while reading her note, there was already kind of some mention of, which had not necessarily been really paid too much attention to, about some aches and pains and some uh, myalgias, which were attributed to the fact that, well, maybe she's having fevers and possibly this case. Um, so um, one thing again, pos uh, which always we talk about GCA as a potential cause of an FUO. The PET scan did not show any uptake in any of the order of any of the major branches, which is somehow is reassuring for that. While walking in the room after knocking the door and going in, she was in her bed and I saw her stand up, which took her a while, took her a while even with help. Uh, and as a lot of patients with PMR usually relate to us, um, it's that night that you go to bed feeling fine and that morning that you wake up that you cannot just stand up from your bed so upon further questioning uh, she was having significant shoulder pain and stiffness again the typical thing which everyone describes which is true and patients you know everyone assumes it's weakness but it, if you really 
probe the patient, it's not weakness per se, it's pain what is driving the, the limitations in their upper extremities and lower extremities. A significant prolonged stiffness. Uh, and again, this was someone who had a full-time busy job who was used to having daily physical activity who was at this point not being able to even stand up of her bed by herself. Um, her exam was you know, significant for the fact that she had decreased range of motion and pain palpation of her shoulder girdle, pain palpation of the lateral aspects of her hips, did not have any inflammatory um, findings on peripheral joints, pulses were symmetrical throughout. And fortunately, uh, you know, temporal artery was uh, palpable. There were no, no skull tenderness or any other kind of ischemic symptoms. And the diagnosis of concern um, was PMR, which uh, as we have heard um, in some of the TNRs as um, spinach to Popeye, patient was feeling significantly improved by the next day after getting her first dose of steroids with at least a 50% improvement that continued to improve throughout the, the, the next few days. Um, this patient had had an extensive workup. It, to my, at that point, uh, there was no significant concern of, of, of any kind of uptake in the shoulder or pelvic girdle, but as this has been discussed also before, and there's growing evidence about the use of PET scan for the assessment of, particularly diagnostic assessment of PMR, we usually can also look for uptake in the shoulder uh, and pelvic girdle, as well as uh, in the interspinous processes in the spine, and also some distal um, uptake in, in hands. Uh, it was not necessarily the case for this patient, but she had a pretty significant res response to steroids with complete resolution of inflammatory markers, going back to her uh, functional uh, state and her daily activities without any issues. So. Again, uh, highlighting the, the, the fun cases that we sometimes get involved and the crucial impact that we can have for patients when just history taking can be very important and listening to, to patients and understanding the before and after, getting an idea of what is the change in daily activity, what are the symptoms, because it might not be the case that the patients necessarily tell us, I'm, I have stiffness and pain, and it might take them a while to really realize that, but that change in mobility, that change in um, in their ability to go on with their daily activities in the context of of low grade fevers should always raise a concern for PMR as a cause of FEO. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this QD clinic.